you're trying to damage my bed. I was like, no, you don't need it because it's like you don't even have a customer yet. Right. You know, and now you want to go out and get a loan and buy a building for what? You know, right. there's loading up a what? business that they're uh, I think they have this idea of business. Yeah, it's the idea of business. Yeah, it's the idea of entrepreneurship. Yeah, mm -hmm. It, mm -hmm. it's, it's it's because because what's going to happen is um, uh, uh, you, you get a lot. What, what's going to happen is I already know because it already happens. Matter of fact, it happened with Dan. Okay. Uh, uh, he he had a tenant. I, I hit him up one time because I saw one of his tenants go viral with what, what a place. Um, and everybody gets all these accolades, right? Oh man, so, you know, you're doing great big things or whatever on a grand opening, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. But um, uh, 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 what is it called? Like grand opening, grand closing, right? 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 Because uh, I one there was one day I went, uh, met, met with him. I said, hey, that 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 person that still there? It was like he was like, oh no, they've been gone. So what was all that for? You know what I mean? Right, what, right, what was right. all that for? So I rather I ra I like to help people um, to build high growth. Mm -hmm. Also, uh, I want I do want to chime in though in some too. We can chime into it later. Mm -hmm. Viable business, viable business, build viable businesses. Mm -hmm. um, and. All right, guys. Hey, welcome to another episode of the Practical Wealth Show. So I'm excited today. You're going to enjoy this show, as all of them hopefully you are. But <laughs> the uh, so I've missed Pedro Mora. So let me tell you about Pedro. Pedro is a two times founder, uh, two x founder of companies, a, uh, a seasoned deal strategist, startup and small business investor, and a lover of all things business. He's the co-founder of Founding Fuel a small business financing investing marketplace. He's the host of the Earned Interest podcast. We've talked about that. And the Business School of Culture, of the culture, for the culture, I'm sorry. And he's a venture capital advisor to various investors such as Damon John uh, off from the Shark Tank. He's earned a BS in business administration from the University of Delaware. And he's focused on marketing and management. He's a family man, a loving husband, and a father. Pedro, welcome to the Practical Well Show. Yes, thank you. Thank you so much for having me, Curtis. I appreciate it. Yes, my pleasure. So we we you know we always talk in the green room before we come on. So we were getting ready to go into some real cool topic. I said, oh, stop. We need to get this one on tape. But before we do that, tell them because you're. I want to go back to your pet peeves about business, but tell them um, what I didn't tell them, and tell them what, what motivates you to before we, I guess first to. Uh, become the the uh the, for the show and how you got into what you're doing give us a little of your origin story you were bitten by a sure, spider sure. With um, after spider a spider uh, and... uh uh i'm gonna try doing it in 60 60 seconds or 120 seconds um but basically i've always been passionate about entrepreneurship um mm -hmm. i got my first taste of commerce as a little boy my grandfather used to have a uh, farm or garden rather of like watermelon and cantaloupe and he used to take me out to the garden and we'll We'll uh, harvest the cantaloupe, the watermelons, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, and we'll take it down to the local grocery store. And like Jay-Z used to sell his music out the uh, chunk of his car. Mm -hmm. We used to sell watermelons at the chunk of my grandfather's pickup truck. Okay. Um, and so that was my first state taste. I didn't know what it, what it was at the time. So me, my media family didn't know anything about my entrepreneurship. They were against it. But through the growing up, getting into college, I got exposed to entrepreneurship more. And I actually made a little history when I was at the University of Delaware, where I founded the Entrepreneurship Club. And University of Delaware is a predominantly uh, a, a white university. So mm -hmm. I was kind of proud because, you know, me being a young black man, I made a created a student organization there. Mm -hmm. um, and I called the Entrepreneurship Club, which is still in existence today. That's, oh, cool. you know, mm -hmm. umpteen years later, mm -hmm. 27 years later. And so, but through that, um, I used to, the, the origin of the word, the, the, the why for the club was I felt like most great businesses have people from different dis disciplines outside of business, mm -hmm. you know, technology, fashion, uh, culinary, whatever, and they married to business, but there was no way for us to communicate. So I started the club. 
but one of my guest speakers was a local venture capitalist. And, um, and there was also another tech entrepreneur as well. And those two who are the ones who exposed me to the world of venture capital mm. uh, at that young age. And so after I graduated, sometime after I graduated, that same venture capitalist who came and spoke and I, and I helped out with when I was in college, mm -hmm. he had to open out his firm. And then from there, he brought me on his wing and taught me the whole world of venture capital. So that's how I kind of got it. Because at the time when I was in college, even though he had me helping him out, I had no idea what I was doing. I just saw money right i just saw right, right. entrepreneurs ask and i saw like a whole bunch of rich people investing mm -hmm. in i had i was clueless of what was really happening but i was also intrigued and so but anyway but that's how i got into the world of venture capital so the, let's talk about tell them what a venture because i have people and we talk they talk about buying businesses but what is venture capital and private equity different and then tell them what venture capital is. Sure, sure. They, uh, I like to say that um, a pro uh, venture capital is more of like a subcategory out of private equity. Private equity is the big boy, mm -hmm. everything, right? M majority of the times, private equity, they, they buy full majority ownership in things, 51% or more. Um, however, venture capital is different. In a sense of it's, it, it's the same and different. It's the same in a sense of it is a equity fund mm -hmm. that raises money from other people. People put it in there. There's a management fee. There's a carried interest, et cetera, et cetera. So similar business model. Okay. However, the strategy is different as in venture capitalists. We go in and invest and take a minority position in those early stage companies and these companies can range in early stage, which they consider more risky, meaning mm -hmm. like they are new, they don't have any customers yet, maybe a patent, maybe not a patent. Maybe they do have some track uh, customers, some traction, or some sales or whatever. So um, we try to invest in, in good companies, help them to grow so that way they can be bought later down the road. Mm hmm from the get-go so you're starting out building to sell does the owner want to sell yes. or, i mean that's the yes. goal is it to is grow the it purpose and to sell no other reason that's the only way we make money is we go in with the intention to sell uh, i mean to, to <clears throat> excuse me we invest with the hope that they uh, are are bought within a certain time frame okay and so that's funny because you, so it goes back to my, uh, we were talking about behind the scenes is that we always talk about investing is really more about becoming something than buying something. And mm -hmm. so you've become a really astute investor. Tell them about that, the path to like what you learned. Cause I, what I'm trying to do, Pedro is pull out the lessons of even at your level, there's a discipline to looking at, and analyzing assets. Yeah, 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 absolutely. I'm gonna start with a quote um, that my boss, the one who taught me, my mentor who taught me the world of venture. Um, it's not his quote, it's from a president, but I'm just drawing a blank of the president. Um, it, it's basically trust but verify. Mm -hmm. And that was one of his principles that he kind of lived in. And so that is one of the, if anything else, um, you have to do have as an especially early stage investor. In other words, will we say tr uh, trust but verify? Trust in the sense of like listen to what they say, um, you know, which is great. Believe it, mm -hmm. but then look up under the hood or mm -hmm. pull the curtain back just to verify it is what it is. Because we've came across deals. People say they have certain college degrees, don't have college degrees. They have um, uh, uh, patents, don't have patents. Even now, there's been some in some recent news. I'm drawing a blank. Uh, I just uh, there was a tech company that I think J.P. Morgan bought mm -hmm. that is has exploded because they found out that the the, the founder entrepreneur said that they have certain amount of users, certain amount of sales, certain amount of traction, as we call it. And after after the the company uh, J.P. I think it was J.P. Morgan bought the company. Mm -hmm. They realized none of that was there. It was all fabricated. It was all wow, made up. That is shocking. And and so <laughs> one of my big questions I I, mm -hmm. I when I saw that I was like, before it got to that point, like what, what were all the other investors doing? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Before they got to in 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 harsh reality, there is that FOMO thing where, um, like oh I want to get in because such and such is in here, right? 
And so there's this there's this roller coaster of excitement, and but no one ever checks up under the hood, you know what I mean, or, or pulls the curtain back. And so a uh, reason why I'm saying that is because that helps you discover holes. Mm -hmm. And even when you discover holes, it's not to say that you still don't do the deal. It's just now you because if you do because you could just see a hole, but mm -hmm. still decide to to to, uh, to to push through because you may already know how to fix the hole. The whole yes. being that big, right? Yeah. So Which you know is now is an opportunity for you to, to add value. Co correct. Correct. Right. Correct. Mm -hmm. Correct. Correct. Exactly. And and that's what and that's why a lot of times I tell entrepreneurs just go open up, be open and honest. What are the gaps? The gaps doesn't mean that the the, the, the investor is going to say no. Some of them may say no, and that's fine. Mm -hmm. But some of them may still say yes, but they're able to now add more value because, oh, no, that's what we invested in a similar company that did something just like, had to go down the same rabbit hole like that. We mm -hmm. already know how to handle that. Mm -hmm. We'll bring mm -hmm. you on board. Boom. We fixed that. You'll be off to off to the races. Right. And so it's um, but it's the trust, but verify because especially early stage, these deals are risky. A lot of things go south. Most of the deals are going to fail, but you want to do your best to minimize that failure rate, you know, to, to, for a company to fail because they said they had a patent and they never had a patent. I don't even blame the company at that point. I blame the investor. That's your fault. Yeah. 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 You know what I mean? So just using that as a, as an example, but mm -hmm. yeah, I would say that's probably the one biggest lessons lesson is uh, verifying the data and, and confirming what the entrepreneurs, the founders are saying about the company that mm -hmm. it is true. I mean, there's a lot of other factors, but I'll say that that's that's a good foundation right there to start with. Okay, we we're I cut you off, so I want to I want to come back to something else, but I want to go on. We were talking about your pet peeves with business owners, I guess, as analyzing deals. You remember what we were talking about? Oh yeah, the, uh, you mentioned yeah. something about the uh, uh, we we're talking about the social media gurus, the credit credit gurus. Yes, and um, and uh, I was just saying my pet peeve is I see ads all the day, and they and they have so many followers. And uh, I mean, I'm like, I guess that's sometimes I'm like, I guess that's what people want to hear. Right. But I know dealing with companies at the early stage and even dealing with companies at the um, end of their life in a sense of they're trying to sell the business mm -hmm. um, that just just putting a, a saying, yeah, I can get you X amount of funding or whatever. Uh, that's not really the best strategy. My whole thing is I'm OK with getting the funding, but. What if there's another way, right? right? And and then secondly, you kind of alluded to this earlier off, off screen, is that sometimes, uh, um, because one of the things I'm always asked, like, do you even need the funding? Because I think that sometimes we just take the money because we say, oh, oh, I can get you two hundred thousand dollars in credit card debt. So what? If you don't right. need it, don't get it. Right. Because now, because right. even in the world of venture, sometimes it is a bad thing if if a, if a founder has too much capital disposal because they can blow it easily. You know what I mean? And, yeah. and they spend on their own thing. So a simple just got burn rates and they're just, you know, they got yeah, just spend, private so for money. Example, like a simple yeah. tip, right? Like I, I, I love the, I love the idea of trying to bootstrap as much as you can to learn as much as you can, and then use the new money to come in to just accelerate on what you learn. Right. So for example, like, uh, as an early stage entrepreneur, you got to figure out who your customer is, right? Right. Mm -hmm. Most people think they know who it is, but they really don't. They're very vague. But the reality is, you got to narrow that bad boy down to understand right. the psychographics of them, the demographics of them. Um, where do they hang out? Where are they? Um, and all those things are important. Even the wordplay, or even the type of language that that resonates with them to get them to buy. What can happen is, is that. Um, you want to be, and also you want to also you also want to know who is not your customer too. Right. But what happens is before you figure out a lot of that stuff out, what happens is if you get a lot of extra capital to you, you just going to oh, just say okay here 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 Facebook Instagram I'm gonna just donate some money to you. Right. I'm just going to go ahead and put a whole bunch of Facebook ads and just kind of pray and spray that someone will come in to you. Versus take the time to really learn that your demographic, who your audience is, how to reach them. Then go get the money, then spend it because then you may realize you up there trying to get 200 grand. You may realize you only need 50 grand or whatever right. the number is. Right. To really maximize because every time you every time you ask for money outside of your own money, 
you got to pay that back somehow. Yes. You know, it's so funny. I was, I had this, there was a clip out there with Mark Cuban one time and he shot, it was like somebody from like the wall street journal. He says, well, what about funding and getting money for your business? He said, listen, if you get, you don't need to borrow money to go into business. Most time he says, if you're buying today, this is a couple years ago. He says, you're borrowing money going to business. You're a moron. Right. And um, because it's the only thing constant is that bill. Yeah. Your income's not constant. I mean, yeah. and a lot of times I'll do, I obviously do uh, like SBA events and no, SBA, um, score events in here mm -hmm. locally in Philly. Mm -hmm. And uh, they were like, how can I get business funding? You have a grant. I was like, what are you talking about? I mean, you yeah. know, I always tell people, cause I'm a marketing guy, right? Yeah. Go like I'm a financial guy, but I'm a marketing guy. Like people ask me, I'm in the marketing business. Right. And so yeah. you need to go sell something. Well, if you leave me look at Shark Tank, they're like, what are your sales? Mr. Wonderful. Yeah. Like, what are your, you know, cause that's your proof of concept. People are yeah, voting with their wallet. Yeah. And are you yeah. selling stuff? Like you need to, like to me, a lot of times you need to grow through sales. Like, can you get the, you know, who's your market? Who's your, who? Who needs your stuff? What's the story? Like, I'm, I'm a big Dan Candy guy, right? So it's market, message, media, right? So yeah. what's the market? Who's your who? To your mm -hmm. point, right? And mm -hmm. you had to have that dialed in, a market, message, media, match. And then um, then what's the message? What problem are you solving for them? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And and, and that's what I'm saying. Cause, because, like, just imagine if you didn't know that, right? Let's just say you don't even know the message, the language, right? Right, right. You you just you just got two hundred grand in credit, you know, because you went to Navy Federal Credit Union. That's one of the popular ones they always right, talk right, about. Right, 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 right. Yep, yep. And now you go out and put ads in the newspaper. You put it in Facebook and you put it on Instagram, TikTok, or whatever, and you burn through that money and no one buys. Or look, know what? I'll give you credit. Someone buys, but it ain't enough to pay back that two hundred grand. Right, right. You know what I mean? And so now, what do you do? You're screwed. You're out of business. It's not. They want you. You don't want. I, and that's the thing. It's like if you got to dial that in first and make because a lot of times you don't need to. Because what happens is people always try to sell you what I call media, right? Yeah. And uh, so you know ads and and I like direct response. So if I put a dollar, I want a dollar, dollar fifty two dollars back. I don't care about like personally. I could care less about branding. Branding is for like the Procter and Gamble's, okay? But yes, entrepreneurs need to put information out because marketing is an investment, not a cost, right? Yeah. And so you should put a dollar out and you should get back in your lead generation and, you know, building your database and, absolutely, you know, all absolutely. that kind of stuff. Now you got some teeth there. You got real business assets that can yeah. that can make you money. And as I, because we're starting another program where we're going to do some business development stuff with, mm -hmm. with, with people because I've figured out that, okay, here's how you can grow your business. I have a talk called, um, what do we call the talk? I haven't done it in a while. I'm going to pull it back out there. Seven steps to more profits and sales. How to grow your small business without spending new money on advertising, right? Yeah. You know, and you can, there's stuff you can do. I'm a big J Abraham guy, so it's from some of that stuff. Mm -hmm. And how you can, um, you know, look at your hidden, a lot of people have assets in their business Mm -hmm. A list, an email list that they don't call. Yeah. You know, existing customers. It's a you know, yeah. it's it's stuff that if you could optimize that stuff. Now, if somebody gives you money, now you you got it dialed in and now you just need to scale. Yeah. And I think you have to be more creative with that, even. But that's yeah, that's, yeah. Uh, I agree. I mean, that's that's exactly it's the exact because I probably advise mentor or whatever you want to call it, probably hundreds of uh, people a year. Mm -hmm. Some people get it. Some people don't. Some people just mm -hmm. want the quick dollar. And 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 also, too, I get sometimes get beat up in a sense of like, because I got to be the guy to come down like, no, nah, you don't need that. Right. And then I was like, well, you're trying to damage my bed. I was like, no, you don't need it because it's like you don't even have a customer yet. Right. You know, and now you want to go out and get a loan and buy a building for what? You know, right. there's if loading up what? a business that they're uh, I think they have this idea of business. Yeah, it's the idea of business. Yeah. It's the idea of entrepreneurship. Yeah, mm -hmm. it, it's mm -hmm. it's it's because because what's going to happen is um, uh, uh, you, you get a lot. What's going to happen is I already know because already happens. Matter of fact, it happened with Dan. Okay. Uh, uh, he he had a tenant. I, I hit him up one time because I saw one of his tenants go viral with, with a place um, and everybody gets all these accolades. Right. Oh, man. So, you know, you're doing great big things or whatever on a grand opening. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. But um, uh, uh, what is it called? Like grand opening, grand closing. Right, right, right. Because uh, I one, there was one day I went, I met, met with him. I said, "Hey, that 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 person that still there?" And it was like he was like, "Oh no, they've been gone." So what was all that for? You know what I mean? Right, what right, what right. was all that for? So 
I rather I ra I like to help people um, to build high growth. Mm -hmm. Also, uh, I want I do want to chime in. There's always something too we can chime into it later. Mm -hmm. Viable business, viable business, build viable businesses. Mm -hmm. um, and um, but to do that, it takes the homework, like what you were just saying earlier, of understanding the customer's pain points, understanding the language, the the messaging that th that resonates with them to get them to respond, mm -hmm. um, and and then how to even reach them, and 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 then then from there you build you build from there. Right. It's start small, grow big. Right. You should build from there and then you're going to eventually need funding. Eventually, it, it, I, you know, no one's against that. Right. It's just we're putting a cart before the horse. Yes. You know, we we're, and, and then especially especially the people that look like us, all these credit gurus, they all started because, you know, they're saying that we all have bad credit, which could be true. But now you're making people want to have worse credit. Right. Because you are give telling them to do all these things to get more credit without a real business and now you're gonna uh 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 because uh, because if you look at the, the testimonials it just talks about hey yes i was able to get this i was able to get that we don't interview them five years down the road right are they even in business are they or, or are they declaring bankruptcy oh you're killing you know? me because i that's a pet peeve i'll make people when i go over their stuff i was like all right you got all this business credit out here so i tell they've been on something but where's the revenue for the business to cover this because like, your all your stuff is commingled you don't have good financials and i make them okay no I, we're going to separate church and state because i need you to make this damn business pay for all this business debt you know what i mean and run a real have a real thing yeah. And um, yeah, I've had people get business credit and they will have them do a loan and just put like 40,000 in a bank to pay for a loan and they'll get the loan, but they don't have anything to do with the money. So they're just giving it right back to the bank. I mean, I've literally had a workshop. I had somebody say something that wow. stupid. And um, like, where the person called me up out the stage because she didn't like it either. And I was like, well, you know, it was like one of my first meetings there, but she knew who I was like, well, you know, that's a bit aggressive. I was trying to not to blow up your thing, but I was like, I don't know that I would just borrow money. Yeah. Just be yeah, borrowing just money. For sake, yeah. Just for it to be there. Like for what? So you can build it up and say you're paying it back. You're borrowing it and giving it right back. So I mean, you, I'll tell people, look, borrow money to make money if, if you need it. Cause a lot of times yeah. you can grow out of, out of the revenue. So go back to what you were going to talk about. I don't want to, you know, where I'm, I could go off on a, on a on a, oh, a rant, yeah. a Kurdish rant. I'm not going to do that. <laughs> so. yeah. Um, I mean, uh, uh, I th I, th I think that was really it. Just the punchline of the fact that, um, focus on the customer. Yeah. Don't just get the money. Uh, get because because and, and also too, it's the marketing. I will say these categories are do. They, so it's funny how we're talking about how entrepreneurs need to uh, identify their customer, their messaging, and all that. Right. The people that they're getting funding for don't do that, but those credit gurus do. Yeah, they know how to talk get, to the audience. get you. That's right, because you think you need this, right? They're yeah, yeah, they know how to play. With, go get the bag, right? That's not a bag. Right. Bag right. is revenue. That's the bag. Right. That's the bag. You know, a loan ain't no bag. That's debt. customers are the bag, right? Because that's customers now you can you can you can literally print money if you've got a good service. Exactly. And is that kind of what you? What you um so let's so it seems like there's two parts to what you do. So you consult with people, startups, yeah, and then so, you yes. you do the bring the money. Tell them tell them talk a little yeah, about that. A little, I like little bit of both. So process. um I, I play on both sides of the fence because I feel like it's needed anyway. Because mm -hmm. well, let me say this: as a, as when you're a venture capitalist in general, your role is working with a lot of entrepreneurs anyway. Because that's your deal flow. Mm -hmm. um, that's how you curate deal and. It, it, it is helpful if you curate deal, educate and all that, because it helps prompt more quality deal flow that fits the ideal mark for, for a fund. Mm -hmm. um, but on the other side of the table, because we got to get money from help our limited partners to invest. Um, we also sometimes do deals and we, we co-invest in deals or participate in deals. So they on the other side of the table is a lot of educating to, uh, accredited investors Mm -hmm. on how to invest in early stage startup companies. So we, we, we a lot of times we play on both sides of the fence because you kind of need both. We need good quality companies for deal flow and we need uh, checks to put in the companies. You right. know, so right. 
Um, but especially the, the uh, 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 in the more recent years, there has been a greater interest of angel investors in er early stage companies uh, from diverse people, men, women, mm -hmm. and color, and all that's good. So, which is mm -hmm. which is a great thing. Um, so, um, so I play on both sides of those fence. So that's why I sometimes go left to entrepreneurs because um, that's the main. And that in one way, that's it's like a two sided marketplace in a sense where that's our main supply customer, right. but then we also have other investors, so like some of the things I do for uh, uh, Damon John uh, is one of uh, one of my clients where for him, a lot of times I bet a lot of deals he does on the show that he selects. Oh, and so okay. it goes back to kind of trust, but verify, right? Because especially when you're on TV, um, you don't, you know, you don't know these people, right? Um, not to say anything's wrong with the people, but they're people, you know? Right, right. Um, and people all have an agenda. Everybody has an agenda. And, um, and it happens... You know, people lie, unfortunately, and and people lie in private. People are going to lie on TV. So that doesn't matter. So anyway, a point is, is that, um, you know, my role is to help vet a lot of these deals that that come through. And sometimes I come across some other deals that are off the show, too. But um, but it's a lot of deals that that let's that, talk about that. That's fascinating. Right. Because I yeah. knew I said, look, this is a TV show. So there's a lot of stuff going on that year. So let's say uh, uh, he, he gets somebody. That, that wants to work with him. And they, so he's got a deal. Mm -hmm. So after the thing, then you get called in to, all right, let's go into the hood with this thing and see if this uh, is worth my time and money. Yes. And that's what yeah, you yeah. do. Yeah, yeah, that's that's basically it. Um, um, he selects a deal in the show. Um, and, then, um, and then after the deals he selects, they come my way. And I just do some, you know, vet and diligence and all that good stuff. And just to make sure, just to try to identify um any red flags really yeah 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 that's fascinating i um i'm in the um click phones two comic club so he's been doing mm -hmm. a lot of stuff with russell brunson you know on some some ads yeah yeah i've seen yeah. some ads with him on yeah. there yeah so yeah. I, i've seen yeah. him in ad and russell talked about getting to know him a little bit and it's, it's yeah. been pretty cool um that so what what are the like let's say somebody well you said something interesting build a viable business yeah and so let's say I'm in business, I'm listening to you, and I either I'm trying to grow, scale it, and sell it. How do I? So you begin with the end in mind. What would you, in in what would you like for them to start doing by the time they get to you to, to think about from the get go so they're ready to come to you if you if they want to grow this thing bigger. And so that's it. a great question, and, and and I'm gonna say it all depends on. Um, it, there's a lot of factors, but cause, cause there's a lot of funds that today cater to each stage of the business. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, but I will say preliminary is you, you used the word earlier about solving problem is basically, uh, answer, uh, uh w identifying what the problem is that you're solving mm -hmm. and the mm -hmm. solution that you are using to solve it and some kind of lease rough prototype or something that's at the early stage now mm -hmm. my background we uh um was at a series a fund uh which in other words that means the first round of institutional venture capital money mm -hmm. um and the series a all that really the, the alphabet don't mean anything other than just it can be a b c d e f g or whatever, mm -hmm. whatever. just mm -hmm. more rounds of each each time you have a a, um, a letter mm -hmm. it's another round of funding at that stage, there, the expectation or the criteria rather is that there's already a team built, there's already sales, uh, um, and you really just need our capital to expand and grow. Um, there's earlier stages, we, we may call it seed or pre-seed, um, and those stages are becoming more competitive too. So sometimes you do want, again, traction, some sales, some product and all that, but just because the whole landscape is becoming really competitive. But really, a good idea, well, not even just a good idea, a good execution on, a, even if it's a half-baked idea, but mm -hmm. a good execution on a half-baked idea at the minimum um, with a good market potential and some kind of strong competitive advantage. Um, and, and, and I'm going to pause there because I think that that doesn't get talked about enough. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. What is that different? And that differentiator can be very different in all different facets. Sometimes it can be simple as design. Sometimes it can be simple, simple as uh, it can be functionality with a patent around it. Sometimes it can be business model. Sometimes 
It can be like Netflix and Blockbuster. Is that what Bu Bu Buffett calls a moat around it? To kind yeah, of yeah, 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 yeah. Mm -hmm. It's the same thing. Yes, yes, yes. It's the same thing. And and um and uh, and with that, all those little pieces are important to the puzzle to mm -hmm. build a viable company. And I got this from a, a book by uh, Steve uh, uh, Prita, I think it's called, uh, Viable. That's what it's called. And it's basically about, um, he was an M&A uh, advisor and it was basically about uh, 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 building a viable business that's attractive because I've been on the other side also too. Um, I haven't, uh, uh, me and my friend, Come, um, right, and we didn't we didn't have we didn't get a chance to close on it because the pandemic happened. We mm -hmm. were about to buy a business, and um, and we were able to negotiate down like a significant low price because there was a lot of holes in that in that business. And if you buy or build a business uh, from a point of um, what am I trying to say, a point of view of an investor, what they would mm -hmm. like to see, even if you don't ever get get money from an investor or a buyer. Mm -hmm. It helps you build the framework for that business because that's going to make your business really attractive. Okay. And uh, and it could be s small things as strong revenue growth, the moat, right? Strong better advantage, a good team, any into intellectual property, whether it's a patent or something like that, um, a, bi a big market opportunity. Um, and, the, and then that's, oh, and then of course the organization of your documents. Um, mm -hmm. That's a huge uh issue Just simple as that you're consistently got your PL, you got your balance sheet you have all that stuff there even the contracts you have a, a really organized system because a lot of times business buyers um they come in and they realize everything's all over the place they, right. they can't they can't they can't you know you're going to want a high number on your asking price but as you're going to get it's going to get dropped because you didn't put all your systems in place Right. To, to confirm that you're doing that well. Um, it's almost like real estate where let's just say it's um, you want to buy a property. Uh, Dan told me about this one property, too, in, uh, I think on Broad Street. This one guy wanted like a, a, a ridiculous price. But Dan would say, look, hey, I looked at that. And he was like, look, they are over, that building is grossly overpriced. And the owner is an old school guy, like in his 70s, 80s. In other mm -hmm. words, like everything is old there. Even the system of collecting rent money. And like if you were to buy it, you will have to put in a lot of extra processes mm -hmm. um, to get it up to today's standards in terms of whether technology, whether systems, or whatever the case may be. He's still running it like an old school model. Mm -hmm. It's the same thing even in the business world. So someone will have to um, uh, go in to invest more in order to get the systems in place. And so just imagine, like you mentioned Warren Buffett, Warren Buffett likes to buy businesses at a premium, because, but he only finds those well-oiled engines. Right. Meaning they're right. organized, they have a good, strong brand positioning, a good moat, a good team. And he wants to do a little, he wants to invest, then operate a little more passively. It's mm -hmm. like what you said earlier, like he, he's involved, but not heavily involved. Right. And in order to do that, he has to invest in a well-oiled. Because they don't want to operate. They don't. They're trying right. to. He don't want to operate. Yeah. Right. So they got to have a good operation already in bed. And yeah. he said his strategy is, is that he will pay a premium, a.k.a. the entrepreneur is going to get more money. Right. And right. But there's other investors who look for more distress. Look, I got a. There's a guy out of North Carolina. He's doing a uh, 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 a roll up of like distressed pizza huts. In other mm -hmm. words, he goes in, negotiate, kind of no money down. Uh, I mean, he has to find money for working capital, or whatever. Mm -hmm. But uh, goes in, buys them, try to revamp them. He's he, uh, uh, last time I talked, he had like two, but I think he's trying to get up to ten, and then mm -hmm. kind of structure it all, get it all organized, get them performing right. And then sell that whole package to someone else. Mm. And so, but that's his strategy. He's, right. that's, that's he's kind of a turnaround he's, guy. Yeah, he's not going to pay a premium. Right. He wants to pay nothing because basically it, you did a bad job. But you're a real estate investor. So he's trying to find distressed buyers, right? That he can go in, create value and kind of, you know, flip it. So to speak. Yeah, I yeah. In this case, yeah, you, yeah, mm -hmm. you can say that. Yeah, he's trying to flip. It, it may be a longer window compared yeah. to real estate in terms of flipping. But essentially, he's trying to 
buy as many distressed. That's a strategy. He doesn't right. want to pay a premium. Uh, a little Caesar Pizza Huts uh, uh, franchises, and then get them all performing well, right? Up to code, whatever it may be, and then boom, here you go, and and then he that way he can argue for a higher price tag because right. he made it a nice well oiled machine. I think that's brilliant because if I uh, when you look at it, like I like <clears throat> we like cash flow, Pedro, right? Mm-hmm. Talking our clients about cash flow. And at Practical Wealth, what we're teaching is to buy assets that, what's an asset? Something that puts money in your pocket. So there's Mm -hmm. four asset classes, right? Mm -hmm. Business, real estate, Mm -hmm. paper assets, and commodities. And if you look at the fours for 100, Mm -hmm. I see them in that order, right? Mm -hmm. They build businesses first, Mm -hmm. right? Then they buy real estate with the profits, right? Mm -hmm. And so Mm -hmm. I find that business Personally, I mean, my dad was in business, my grandfather's in business, so I, I tend to lean towards that. Um, <laughs> so I'm my father's son. But business is the fastest path to cash. It's harder. Yeah. Because there's a yeah. lot of moving parts. But see, it harder is relative. Because like if you are, you know what you're looking for, because as you become a yeah, better investor, I agree. The risk, I agree. As, your, as your knowledge goes up, your yeah. risk goes down. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And uh, so it's like I look at it, it's like, oh, this is, you know, to me, having a job is risky. <laughs> so. Yeah, 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 yeah. And I'm glad you said that, too. I think hard is relative. Yeah. Because everybody's because one, one thing as I get older, I've realized is like I try to get as the as Bible says, in all things, get understanding, try to get understanding of life and in, 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 in perspective mm-hmm. because you, you hit something on the nail. It It, it is all relative. Uh, um. You know what I mean? Like me trying to get into a property and, and flip it, boy, that's like trying to cure cancer. But Dan, and probably even you, like, boom, it's, it's like a walk in the park. No, Dan, you know I'm mean? closer to you. Oh, you're closer <laughs> to me? Okay. So you understand what I'm saying? It's, <laughs> yes, like, it's yes. like trying to cure uh, uh, cancer or something like that. But like uh, 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 Dan, it, he he could probably, and not, 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 not even like, uh, financially successful, Dan. Even in right. pre Dan, well, even right. if he doesn't have the coins. So let me let me put this out there so they don't know. So you know who Dan Hardy, oh, okay, who's okay. a look up. I forget what episode. I'll try to put a link to it. Dan, we call him Dan the Real Estate Man. Yes. Uh, Daniel Harvey, and then we our episode was called Real Estate. It's a financing game, right? And so yeah. we we're just talking about people want the real estate, but it's really a game of finance, right? So he's talking yes. about that, but Dan will. You know, fine. He's got an area. He knows who where he wants to invest. Mm-hmm. He knows mm-hmm. the property. He knows mm-hmm. how to break it down and build it back up. Like it's not a thing. Correct. Right. Correct. And plus, he's so it goes back to investing is about becoming. So he has yeah. become from we both know his story. Starting at SEPTA as electrician, mm-hmm. Dan, Dan was so funny because Dan was making like fifteen twenty thousand dollars a month, still part time, debating on whether or not he should leave yeah. SEPTA, which is which is. The, which is the local and if you're in Philly, it's the bus company, the bus and yeah. transit for it. He was like, I, you don't know, you think I should leave? And it's when your wife says, yeah, I think you should go. Then you know you're doing okay. Yeah. Because <laughs> right? yeah. so, I know you know how to leave that good. You got a good job, right? And um, <laughs> what? Let me shift gears for a second. I just wanted to make sure because so they could reference that and go find him because okay. his story okay. is fantastic and he's just yeah. a regular oh, yeah, guy. Yeah. I, I love his uh, uh, story. I remember him. Him even talking about the uh, uh, the calls afterward, like when he finally made that uh, mm-hmm. that 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 leap, and how like I think he I think he was saying like so many things are going wrong, like literally like the day after he <laughs> he said peace out to to to, to his uh, his job, and it, it it just freaked him out. But obviously, you know, he can it laugh worked out. It. That's right. It stressed him out a lot on on, on uh, like day two. <laughs> And that, but see, that's normal. See, a lot of times going back to the, to the, all of the hype on, on these different social media platforms, that's business, right? Because it's not going to be all bright lights and glamour. Yeah. And um, so it's how you work through that. My dad used to always tell me is, look, it takes two to five years to build a business. He said, and I remember I was like eight. I asked him, why are these, we're in a supermarket business, right? So he, I would see his little stores open and close. We go He'd help them with something. And then, you know, six months later, they'd be closed down. I said, why? Why these? I remember asking. Them, I said, we're driving around going to like cash care. I said, Dad, why does business open and close? He says, when you go into business, you need to have enough money to operate at a loss for yeah. like two years. Yeah. And they have enough to open the doors up. If it don't work, they go out of business because they run out of money. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, that was where it was like, it was some small business survey, right? Most Why do most businesses fail? Because they fail to identify the market. Mm-hmm. And because they do that, they run out of money and then they mm-hmm. close. 
Mm-hmm, and mm-hmm, so mm-hmm. that's so it goes back to finding your market is is curable. Um, let me ask you this, uh, Pedro. Can you share any exciting new developments or projects that you know, uh, funding fuel or 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 you know what you're looking at or working on? Yeah, you, yeah, uh, uh, yes, I definitely can. I, I have two projects that I'm working on. One, uh, Earn Interest. You, you mentioned both of them early in the bio, and I appreciate that. Earn Interest is a podcast that I'm doing mm-hmm. um, uh, right now. It's, it's on Spotify, uh, uh, Apple, and also YouTube. Mm-hmm. Um, and basically, what and, and that is just uh, I like to call it earn interest, the business school for the culture. And that's really just share, uh, providing insight and knowledge for uh, new or experienced entrepreneurs who are trying to build those high growth companies. And I came out of the frustration that of what we alluded to earlier of just seeing a whole bunch of garbage. Mm-hmm. And a lot of, and the downside is, is a lot of people are eating that garbage mm-hmm. and it's not really helping. And, mm-hmm. and so my passion for a lot of diverse people is to help close that wealth gap by really building a turning the business to an asset, making the business really an asset. Yes, that is that is eventually viable. Yeah. So we just yeah. talk about a, a, a lot of different topics. We also include. I started including some celebrity news too because I think it's a good topic to talk about, and I like to sometimes break down or have commentary around a um, uh, 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 transactions that happen, whether you know uh, what you are selling their music catalog to a private equity firm, good or bad kind of thing. Because I think. These are good things to talk about because these are real things. Even though right. you know, Dr. Dre and all these are big multimillionaires, that same thing happens even at a micro scale. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? And so, and speaking of micro as a, as a plug, a segue rather, uh, Fund and Fuel um, uh, had this journey too. There's another real estate journey of like pivoting back and forth and things not working out, but we're finally on the right track of we're building a micro private equity marketplace. And all that really <laughs> is, is that, we're helping. We realize I'm taking my knowledge from the world of venture capital and trying to apply it to more small businesses, scalable small businesses, because I mm-hmm. realized about 84 percent of new startups are not a fit for venture capital mm-hmm. or lenders. And so and I work with some of those, too. And so, however, there is a market of helping them find capital as well as help. Um, most of these businesses struggle to access capital in addition to help. So this micro private ar- private equity marketplace operates just like traditional private equity, but just smaller scale. Companies under between 50 to, 50 to $5 million in revenue. And uh, what we're trying to do, we learn about the business. Wait, and- 50 what? Oh, uh, 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 gross revenue. Sorry. So so our minimum our criteria is for these businesses. I'm um, glad you asked the question. Um, minimum $50,000 uh, in revenue. Reason being because we don't want to work with any, you know, just trying to figure out life kind of businesses. Right, right, right. Some, someone that has I mean, fifty thousand revenue is like four grand a month. Yeah, you mean? yeah. So that I mean, so if you're, I would tell people, listen, if you're not doing that, it's not a business. You, that's a hobby. Yeah, 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 <laughs> yeah. Not the not. We just try to keep it real because no, see, no, I'm, it's, I, I'm trying and see. I always tell people this because I the the meeting I heard that statement in the mm-hmm. guy told me. Say so, y'all got to get in different rooms. The guy said, "Listen, if you ain't making ten thousand dollars a month, you're yeah. not in business. You have a hobby, yeah. right?" That's and true. so That's I think true. we've got to stop sugarcoating it for people. Yeah, and and yeah. they have to get there. But all that it means is you got to learn how to sell some stuff. You got to learn yeah. how to, you know, you don't know how to. If I see, if I look at a business, we should, we should trade talk trade notes on some of this stuff. I think we can yeah. talk with yeah. other people. But uh, they're they have a sales problem. They have mm-hmm. a pricing problem. They have a, mm-hmm. you know what I mean? And, mm-hmm. and uh, I think they don't know that because they just, they, they're good at the thing. That they yeah, love. yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, you're hundred percent right. You hit it on the nail because the, the, the unlike venture cap venture backed startups, they, I mean, they struggle to raise capital. Don't get me wrong. There's some, mm-hmm. but, but not as bad as small, small businesses. And the reason why I'm saying that is that, is that typically there's a lot more resources available for scalable technology companies, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. not your consumer products, not your, not the guy who's trying to roll up the little seizure pizzas and all that. You know, they're most of the time out there on, on the limb by themselves. And so with the micro product, private equity marketplace is basically a small business finance and investment marketplace where basically they can come on there. Uh, and now also too, that as a target, these businesses have to have the potential to exceed $5 million in revenue. Why? Mm-hmm. 
because that's the that's the low mid, uh, low mid target for uh, private equity, low low okay. middle market, mm -hmm. and that means if you can hit beyond five million dollars in revenue, your company by default is going to be more valuable mm -hmm. because the, the the marketplace shifted without you is, there. Yeah, Without you, now, right. now mm -hmm. you're now you're in the lens of traditional private equity, right? Where there's a lot more private equity people and a smaller portion of companies, and so just basic supply and demand, and so they're willing to pay more of a premium to buy mm -hmm. you. I mean, mm -hmm. assuming all you got a good well oil engine, mm -hmm. but they're willing to pay a more premium. So we're basically trying to create this micro private private equity marketplace to help these companies scale beyond five million dollars in revenue to be more valuable and be treated at least get the access or available help similar to how VCs help startups. They have, you mentioned pricing, you know, a lot of times founders don't have to worry about that because they already have that uh, 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 on their board, people to help them with strategizing and right. things like that. And so uh, nine out of 10 small businesses still struggle to access capital. And we're trying to fix that. And on, and on the, it's a marketplace. So it's two sided where there's going to be people on the other side, investors, lenders and even buyers because people forget funding can come from buyers as well meaning you only you were great getting that 500 grand in sales mm -hmm. but you need joe schmo to come in and buy the business to get it to five million mm -hmm. you know and so that's that's the other project that we're, we're working on there it's kind of like i like to call like an e-harmony meets or uh, i mean a match.com meets shark tank okay i love that yeah i love so how how can they um if they want to f follow you, find out what you're doing, or uh, and who is the person that should be reaching out to you directly? So if I want them to follow you to oh, learn, listen to the yeah. podcast, and then I don't want everybody y'all to call them, but people that I want you to tell them who you want to talk to. <laughs> yeah, yeah, uh, great. Well, um, for earn uh, for earn interest, you can go to earninterest.com or just search it on the podcast. Anyone mm -hmm. um, that has a desire to start a business, or if you're already in business um uh, uh uh definitely uh uh check that out for uh funding fuel um if you are a let's just say an emerging franchising system um or you are a multi-unit franchisee um or your consumer product company that's scaling again you just have to have sales of 50 um you know we want to help you get more access to capital um but the right type of capital not just any type we, we want to pair you we're going to learn about your business and pair you to the appropriate capital that's, that's needed to help you scale. And then on the other side is just any investors, lenders, or business buyers that would like to buy these small businesses or invest, lend in these type of small businesses. So scalable small businesses right. and investors, lenders, and buyers that want to invest in that same uh, sector. Uh, but feel free, my website, personal website, just pedromore.com, P-E-D-R-O-M-O-R. Uh, uh, re.com and you can get all my social media links there um and also you can be able to contact me from there all right so we'll put all that in the show notes uh pedro any anything i forgot to ask you that you want you want to bring out for we before i let you go because i could do this all day so yeah <laughs> yeah me me too um um i mean i i i don't other than um I don't. I, don't, I want to leave with a nice, like, uh, 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 inspirational quote or something. I, I don't, but I'm just going to just be honest. Just for anyone out there that just wants to try something, do something. I had to tell this lady one time. I'll, I'll use this story as this quote. Um, she she's a single mother, and she was trying to do something. You know, be financial. You know, just trying mm -hmm. to turn her financial situation around. And a lot of times, when you say that out loud, you get inundated with all the people who, who are not really helpful. Meaning, oh, you should invest in crypto. Oh, you should go ahead and get a, a, a funding. You should go ahead and do this. You should go ahead and do that. And what, what happens is that that's actually overwhelming. And it's not really helpful. Mm -hmm. So I told her to do something simple. Scratch all that. Mm -hmm. Figure out what is really the issue. And really the issue is just you need, you need extra cash flow, another stream of income. Boom. Uh, uh, you can start a business, find a business, a gap in the market, or solve a problem, whatever, and do that. And she has done that and she's doing well for herself. I mean, she's working hard because she still mm -hmm. has a full time job, but but she created another stream of income for herself. And and uh, 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 when she's not exhausted from work, building the business, I'm pretty sure she's excited about it. So in other words, just 
don't overthink it. Right. Sometimes you might have to close your ears to the noise, but figure out your own past that's best for you. Because in reality, there's a gazillion ways to build wealth in the world. Yeah, it ain't. It ain't. It, it's not all what you see on Instagram. There's a and the and majority. Go ahead, and I will end with this also. The majority is usually wrong. Okay. Yeah. Earl Earl Nightingale. So like yeah. so look at what the that's why there's 99 percenters and one percenters. And yes. and and it's not because there's a nef nefarious thing trying to keep you down. It's it's yes. a knowledge yeah. gap, it's a behavior gap, right? Yeah. And yeah. um um and so you if you that's why it's it's fascinating because when we when we talk to Pedro, you're you're seeing the Damon Johns, you're seeing that my I would we could have another show we get into this, the mindset of winners, of investors, of people yeah, that are looking yeah. at money because yeah. you know, that's the success. So when you're looking at and you hear about the Buffets, what I want you to do, I want to try to do in the show is to break down how they think, right? Because success yeah. includes and yeah. how can I take some of the stuff he talked about and do it if I'm a $50,000 company? What has to happen? How do I have to be? Who's my client base to move to a $250,000? company yes next year not not yes. like five years from now because it's not yeah yeah, yeah exactly no yeah exactly next year maybe, yeah. maybe even by the end of the quarter but yeah you know, yeah and so uh, that's the know, thing so, start yeah. thinking quarterly and and what do i have to do what i have to walk who's my average size you know client what what are, what's the market because you have to see that's why the book uh, napoleon hill book think and grow rich you have to think about it right yeah. you just can't get up and to this old dunkin Dose commercial time to make their donuts and you just get in go to store and go to work you have to get away from it strategize you need to get in groups. You need to listen to his show to get some of his, or both our shows, actually. And yeah. uh, you'll get some of this thought process. You need to get in masterminds so you can get around people. You you can't expand your own vision. Yeah, yeah. And uh, I need, I'm going I'm to start a mastermind because now I'm, I'm getting all these cool people that I think you're relative. Are you local to, to Philly? Area? Yeah, I'm in Delaware. Oh, yeah. So we, yeah. we have to get together. So, um, Pedro, thank you so much for, for coming on. I think Dan yeah, Harvey and Dan Harvey connected it. us. And, yeah, yeah, uh, I'm glad as well. I'm glad yeah. as well. Yeah, appreciate so it. So, I feel we often call you, we talk offline because I've you just I triggered like three ideas. Okay. <laughs> so, uh, I had that uh, stuff because I'd love to help with some of that stuff. I think I have a little bit of message, you know, if, if, uh, okay. if you ever bring in like a guest or something like that, I'd love to, uh, okay, to come in okay, and, and okay. uh, talk about i i'm gonna show them a way to get access to capital but that's that's a whole other thing but thank yeah. you for coming on this was a lot of fun and yeah, um I, I may tap you in the shoulder because we're doing like some more i have more target people through our mastermind and then have you come and maybe do a live where we can you okay. know put yeah, you I'm, out I'm there and do some q a yeah. yeah so guys we gotta run uh pedro moore thank you for being on the practical wealth show and yes. uh and sharing with us venture capital the mind of an investor, the mind of a business growth strategist and yeah. investor. And so hopefully y'all took from that. Uh, if you like the show, leave us a review. Yeah. Uh, and um, listen, like, and share and get this, let's get this meshes out. And we want to get, both of us want to get you all over on the, what I call the other side of money. Yeah. <laughs> right? yeah. so, all right, guys, have a great day. Thanks so much. All right, take care.